Do you feel like you need to learn a whole new dictionary of vocabulary as you jump into the home buying process? You are not alone. The real estate industry truly does use its own host of words and acronyms and tosses them around as if people use them every day. Earnest money, mortgage insurance premium, appraisal gap, debt to income. I bet a few of these examples are starting to sound familiar to you. The reality is these are not common everyday words and I know that it can be confusing. Today, I am beginning my real estate vocabulary series and I'm going to be answering the question, what is an earnest money deposit? In addition, I will also explore the additional questions of how much is an earnest money deposit, once deposited with the title and escrow company, what happens to the earnest money, and what happens to the earnest money if the sale does not close? So without further ado, let's jump in. Thanks for joining me and welcome back to those that have seen me before. For those that are new to my channel, my name is Leanne Cray. I am a licensed realtor with Allegiant Realty Group here in Oregon. So the question is, what is an earnest money deposit? An earnest money deposit is the deposit of funds by a buyer to a neutral third party within three business days of mutual acceptance between a buyer and seller of a purchase and sale agreement. The earnest money deposit, which is also known as a good faith deposit, acts as a deposit on the property that the buyer is purchasing and demonstrates to the seller that the buyer is serious about buying the home. The earnest money deposit will vary in amount by each transaction. Here in Oregon, Earnest money is typically between one and 3% of the purchase price. For example, if you're purchasing a home for $400,000, the earnest money deposit will normally be between $4,000 and $12,000. Most commonly, we see a buyer choose to offer 1% when writing an offer, but in a competitive offer situation, a larger earnest money deposit can be used as an additional strategy to gain the seller's attention. Some buyers will choose to put down a higher amount to help convey strength to a seller and stand out above other offers. The earnest money deposit is deposited with a neutral third party, which here in Oregon is a title and escrow company. The funds are due within three business days of a mutually signed offer, unless the buyer and seller have written and agreed on a differing timeline, which is not something that is common. The deposit must be in the form of a check or wired funds, meaning it is liquid money that the buyer has saved. And the earnest money cannot be charged to a credit card, which is a question that is asked quite often. Once the earnest money has been deposited, it sits in escrow until the transaction closes. At closing, the escrow company will apply the funds to the buyer's closing costs and their down payment. In essence, it's a pre-deposit of the final closing funds for the buyer. It is not an additional amount. So for example, if your lender has told you that they expect you will need to bring in a final amount of $10,000 at signing, and your earnest money deposit is for $4,000, you will only need to bring in the difference of $6,000 at closing. There are times in a transaction in which a buyer and seller will mutually instruct the escrow company to disperse the funds prior to closing. Sometimes funds will be paid to the seller, possibly to show continued good faith if there needs to be an extension to the closing date for one reason or another, or maybe money is paid to a contractor completing the necessary repairs. Neither event is overly common, yet they do occur. And if this is the situation, the amount of the deposit is still credited to the buyer and their closing figures. What happens to earnest money if the sale does not close? Now, before I forget, if you are finding this information interesting or helpful, let me know by hitting the like button down below. Thank you. Oregon sale agreement provides many due diligence windows for a buyer to, re, uh, to research and learn about the property that they are purchasing prior to closing. So these windows allow the buyer to back out of a transaction should the property not satisfy their needs. In Oregon, we have five main due diligence windows. The inspection, seller disclosures, homeowners association disclosures, title report, and financing. To give a quick overview of the five due diligence windows, the inspection period. This window provides time for a professional hands-on inspection of the repair of the home, the sewer line, radon levels, water quality if the property is not on city water and sewer, and really anything else that the buyer disclosed to the seller that they want to have done and inspected. This window provides 10 business days from the date of mutual acceptance for a buyer to have an inspector go out and verify the condition of the property. The seller disclosure window. In the state of Oregon, a seller must provide a detailed disclosure to the buyer 
regarding what they know about the property. The buyer has a three business day window to review this information once it's received from the seller. Homeowners Association Due Diligence If the home is in a homeowners association, which is also known as an HOA, the seller is required to provide to the buyer all the documents from the HOA. There are rules and regulations, bylaws, accounting of funds, minutes of the meeting, etc. The buyer has five business days upon receipt from the seller to review this information and verify that the rules of the HOA are satisfactory to their situation. The title report. Here in Oregon, the title department will prepare a report regarding what they find in public records about the property. This report discloses many things to the buyer about the property. Some examples being who the current owner is, which should be your seller, how much the yearly property taxes are, if there are any easements or special considerations for the parcel, the legal description of the land, and much more. The buyer has five business days to review this report upon receipt from the title company. The last is financing. Now, if the buyer has disclosed on the purchase agreement that they will be obtaining a loan to purchase the property, should the financing for any reason at all fall through, the buyer can back out of the transaction within 48 hours of receiving the rejection from their lender. Throughout each of these periods, and or any other more specified due diligence windows that can vary by particular property and transaction, if a buyer learns something about the property that is just not suitable to their needs, or maybe the condition of the property is more than the buyer wants to take on, then the buyer can back out of the sale transaction. If the withdrawal is made during one of the specified windows, the buyer can have their earnest money refunded back to them. Now note that I said if made during one of the specified windows. Should a buyer back out of a purchase transaction outside one of the due diligence windows, the buyer can in fact lose their earnest money to the seller. In Oregon, with all of the windows that we have for due diligence, this is really hard to do, but it can happen. This is another instance where your professional realtor can really be key. I know that when I'm working with my buyers, I am very specific with them as I walk them through each window of due diligence, guiding them through the process. In a sense, I become their timeline calendar for them. I do like to believe too that many other agents are the same when assisting their clients as well. And there we have it, all things earnest money. What an earnest money deposit is and more. If this is your first time buying a home, check out my video about 10 must known tips about preparing to buy a home or any of my other real estate related videos about living in, moving to, buying and selling here in Yamhill County. If you'd like to be notified each week as I post new videos, please subscribe and feel free to comment below regarding any thoughts or questions. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week. Bye. Do you feel like you need to learn a whole new dictionary of vocabulary as you jump into the home buying process? Do you feel like you need to learn a whole new dictionary of vocabulary as you jump into the home buying process? Earnest money, mortgage insurance premium, appraisal gap. Why do I have something? Ah, there's like a piece of hair that's driving me crazy. Let's try this again. The earnest money deposit will normally be between $4,000 4, and $12,000 and not be charged to a credit card, which is a question that is asked quite a bit. Whew, that was hard to get out. 